Could Marshall characters finally be interesting in 5th edition? Thesis, please. More news coming out of the D&D Creator Summit as some big changes to Marshall classes seem to be coming in the next one D&D playtest packet. Fighters, and to a lesser extent barbarians and monks, have always been somewhat derided in 5th edition because they quickly get outpaced in combat by other classes. Action Surge is fine and all, but what good is taking 4 attacks in a turn when your wizard is dealing more damage with a single fireball? The fireball solves every situation. Well, it looks like all of that is about to change, or at least things will get a little bit more interesting thanks to 1D&D. During a discussion at the Creator Summit with the D&D team, there were some big changes teased for monks, fighters, and, well, anyone who loves using weapons. Now, as we said in our last video, we weren't at the summit. We're journalists, not creators, despite my made-for-radio voice and also face. I find irony as a blade that cuts he who wields it most especially. So we're pulling this information from folks who were there, like Daniel Kwan, Josh Simons, and Beth Rimmels of N-World. So, first and foremost, let's talk about the monks. Monks are losing their key. Uh, to make the class feel a little bit less like a stereotype of various Asian martial arts characters, Key will now be known as Spirit Points in the next 1D&D iteration of that class. Dungeons & Dragons as a whole is also tackling the somewhat problematic depiction of the monk in various D&D materials since the monk is almost always seems to be a hodgepodge of various Asian traditions and motifs when they're depicted in artwork. They're not only adding some non-Asian representation to various depictions of the monk, D&D is also trying to add more non-European representation in all of the classes to make the game feel more inclusive as a whole. Wizards of the Coast also specifically mentioned that monk's damage output wasn't keeping pace at all with other classes, so expect a major tune-up of their ability and perhaps a long-requested increase in the size of the unarmed damage dice in the next playtest packet. Additionally, one D&D will add weapon mastery properties to weapons, adding additional features to weapons that certain classes can use once they're trained in that mastery type. Some examples apparently given at the uh, summit were the Graze property, which deals some damage equal to an ability modifier even if the attack misses. Uh, the Cleave ability hits multiple targets. The Puncture ability gives you advantage when you take a second attack on uh, against a target, which seems to be pretty useful if you're a rogue. Several classes will have access to this weapon mastery feature, but the fighter class seems to have some extra versatility with weapon mastery, with the ability to train in multiple masteries and even being able to switch which mastery they use when they use a weapon in combat. So some of this probably sounds familiar, and that's, well, that's because weapon traits have similar functions in Pathfinder 2e as well, although classes don't need to unlock those traits using class features. Uh, this is one of the reasons why many folks look at Pathfinder as a bit more interesting, at least when it comes to weapon selection, because weapons have bigger differences than what weapon dice they use when they deal damage, and what weapons can be used in the offhand. Uh, let's be realistic, 5th edition weapons are kind of underwhelming. These changes really sound great, and it can potentially lead to fighters and other classes that are mostly combat focused having more meaningful choices in combat. And, you know, if things go poorly in a fight, apparently those classes can always pull out a gun and shoot someone because firearms will now be martial weapons in 1D&D 2. So, what do you think about the weapon changes? Let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.